Hello, welcome to Dun- uh, Dungeon Dwarves Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Today, we're reviewing the last film that Kevin recommended to us for uh, the month of October, which is um, The Evil Dead, which is a classic film that started the whole Evil Dead franchise. Boy, I'm looking at a picture of Linda nowadays, and she's not looking too good. <laughs> Oi, Betsy Baker. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, apparently, Lucy Lawless was in the original <laughs> Evil Dead. That's not true, by the way, but according to Google, she was. Uh, Google, I think you need to check your, your stuff. Uh, she was she was in the TV series, not the Evil Dead um, movie, which not even called Evil Dead. It was like, what, what was it called? Ash vs. Evil Dead? Right. So, the fil- yeah, the film's directed... And written by Sam Raimi. Apparently, it was based off a book called Within the Woods. Is that an H.P. Lovecraft book? Because apparently, like this was. Uh, no, it was a short film. Okay, never mind. Because yeah, like there's some H.P. Lovecraft inspiration from this film. The entire, the whole Evil Dead franchise revolves around. The Book of the Dead, the Necronomicon, which is a huge H.P. Lovecraft th- uh, thing. <laughs> which, uh, I beat the one H.P. Lovecraft RPG that came out a while ago. I forget what it was called. Uh, fuck. I'm, I'm trying to f- remember. Did that have uh, the Necronomicon in it? It had pretty much everything else. <laughs> uh, which, that... that g- I forget what the fuck that game was called, but it was woke as shit for, like, an H.P. Lovecraft, uh, game. It, more woke than, a, it should have been, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but we're not here to talk about, we're, we're here to talk about the, uh, Evil Dead film, uh, film, which came out in 1981. It's, what, an hour and 30 minutes, or sorry, hour 25 minutes, right? Um, it, it, it's the thing where this movie, um, I love I love the franchise. My favorite's probably Army of Darkness. Even though I love Evil Dead too, Army of Darkness is probably the the one that you know does it for me. And the funny thing about this franchise is that the first film was kind of like a dud. It was considered like a uh, so bad it's good movie and people would laugh hysterical at it and because of that they went from like serious horror film to like horror comedies and the other films and you got to see a lot of uh, Sam Raimi's comic book fan inspiration in those films like like Ash Campbell a- Ashley Campbell sorry not Ashley Campbell Ashley Williams sorry <laughs> Actually, Jay Williams, like, I, I, uh, it's very much like a, basically a horror version of, like, Spider-Man, if you really think about it, right? Um, yeah, so, like, the story for this film is basically five friends, which is two couples and a, and a girl, go to this remote cabin in the woods, uh, find some shit they shouldn't have found, and re- they find the Necronomicon, and some old tape recordings, and they unleash this evil, ancient evil, which possesses Ash's friends one by one, which turn on him, and he has no choice but to kill his friends. And then the the movie ends with uh, a point of view shot of something coming at him, right? Which gotta say, I love the the point of view. Uh, shots where like you have this like thing like coming towards like you know uh, the cabin right and uh, and like the special effects in the film are top-notch that's the thing about indie films from like back in the day versus indie films now is that uh, they were they are probably better because they had to rely. There was no CGI digital effects to rely on. Everything had to be practical, right? Whereas nowadays you watch indie films and they're mostly garbage. Too much use of like you know special uh, special effects and digital 
sorry, spe like digital effects, CGI, even the fucking Jeepers Creepers th uh, 3, which had like a $6 million budget, had the really shitty like digital like gunshot effects <laughs> and blood spatter. Here, the blood is so, which is all real, which I, 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 despite having this film on DVD, I decided to watch uh, the Critical Show, who's a horror host on BitChute, by the way, who uh, who did an episode on this film, and I got to learn a few things. Like, apparently, they, I thought this movie, you would have thought this movie took place, like, over a week or was shot over a week. Apparently, it was shot over weeks, right? And they all had to stay in this cabin, right? And, and there was no hot shower, there was no showers, so nobody, nobody showered, and, like, uh, Bruce Campbell's shirt, uh, that would constantly get splattered with blood, apparently, it was cold, too, in this cabin, so he would warm it by the fire, and it got so hard from the, from the blood, fake blood, that it cracked and then broke, so they had to get a new shirt, right? Which, like, by the way, his hair in this movie was really bad. <laughs> really bad. Thank God they, ch they changed it to, to the... Uh, yeah. So, like, I gotta say, um, the movie, to me, did not age very well. Like, some of the acting from some of the characters was pretty bad. Like, the other guy character, uh, Scotty, he, he, his acting was kind of bad, in my opinion. And whenever, like, the characters are alone, hanging out, the the movie got really boring it's not until like the action happens right where the film actually is is enjoyable and watchable when there's not a lot going on it's kind of it's kind of boring to be honest right yeah and though like you gotta i gotta say the film it's the thing where if you're a horror fan you have to watch it at least once because it did like start a, it did did uh, do original stuff in the in the you know in the horror scene that let people like you know uh, that inspired people like the the POV shots right were were fucking fantastic and uh, the and the, another shot where like you get the where the camera kind of kind of goes around everything that that's great that's like classic Sam Raimi which you see in like all his films even like. So the, his what his most recent horror film like um, had that and it was done fantastic there. I forgot what it was called. Uh, Drag Me to Hell, which if you haven't seen that film, it's it's really good actually. It's really good, and like, it has a pretty fucking awesome ending because <laughs> like the atheist character gets to see his girlfriend get dragged down to hell, and he's like, what the fuck. <laughs> Oh my god, hell is real? Oh shit. <laughs> Fuck man, that movie is awesome. Um, yeah, this movie, it's a thing where it's, honestly, if I ever rewatch the Evil Dead movies, I usually skip this one, because it, it is, in my opinion, the the most boring out of the three, right? But, you, you know, I think everybody should watch it at least once, right? And I, I got it. I don't think I, it, it has like a high rating on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic and all that. Honest, honestly, the movie does not hold up to me. I'm only giving it like a six point, like a six point five out of ten because they have they did have a limited budget. But the like when when things are going on, it's great. And this is like the first film uh, where you get like a tentacle. Uh, grape scene, <laughs> but with like you know, in like a horror film that I've ever seen. But it's not like ten. It's like the there's a scene where like uh, one of the women character, what was her name, Cheryl Williams, who I felt like they tagged that on that like she was his that that was his sister like out of nowhere because like there was n nothing in the film that made you think like oh yeah that. That girl was his sister, and she, he never references her in the sequels or in the comic books that that was his sister. <laughs> that the Jewish friend-looking character was her sister. That, that was his sister. Like, what the fuck, man? What were they thinking? 
Oh my god, that, that's the thing. Oh, also, there's like a scene when the one dude, Scotty, is fighting his girlfriend. He, he, he has a Kandarian knife and throws it. And it somehow... It looks like he throws it and it somehow... Uh, keep in mind, he's grappling with his girlfriend and he throws the knife and it somehow ends up in her back. What the fuck was that? <laughs> right? But overall, I thought it was a great movie, and I, you know, I would recommend it, but it is boring at times. Oh, my, I gotta pause for a sec. Holy crap, speaking of sisters, my mind calls me and asks me what we were doing on Thanksgiving. It's like, that's the thing, this weekend, well, it's actually Monday, but you know, how, it's, how it is. Um, this weekend is basically Canadian Thanksgiving <laughs> for you Americans. Yeah, we do it on October, not November, right? Uh, which, uh, I don't know what exactly, because I would love to review Thanks Killing 1 and 2, uh, sorry, 2 and 3, which I reviewed Thanks Killing 1 last year. I can't seem to find Thanks Killing uh, 2 or 3 anywhere, but if I do, maybe I'll review those this weekend, but I doubt it. Um, yeah, so, uh, I've been watching this Italian crime mafia series <laughs> called Gamora. Which is, uh, because I was still in the mood to watch Mafia shit, and I heard this show was awesome. So I'm gonna do a review for, uh, for that at some point. And we're gonna go and review, um, Halloween themed horror movies. So, uh, I, I need to check them out, but yeah. Also, there's this, um, Nicolas Cage film, where it's like, it's not exactly on Hall. It's not exactly Halloween themed, but there it there's this horror uh, Nicolas Cage horror film where it's where Halloween plays a major like you know plot point. So we might review that, and yeah. So um, Halloween fi horror films we're planning on reviewing is Thirty One by Rob Zombie, Tales of Halloween, uh, Holidays, which is a holiday anthology horror film right we were supposed to review bad candy but like uh <laughs> the channel that that had that movie i got shut down on on odyssey <laughs> but like yeah we'll, we'll we'll find shit to review don't don't worry we'll find ha halloween themed horror movies to review so we're gonna focus on that but first i want to review an andrew garfield film under the Silver Lake, and we'll review and we'll review that next. Also, I did a review for like uh, Jack Nicholson's movie The Pledge, which is uh, directed by Sean Penn. Came out in 2001. It's a murder mystery film. I saw it. I liked it, but I did not like the ending. I was gonna post a review, but like my review had like some major spoilers in there, and I tried to have my mur murder mystery review spoiler free so i'm not posting that but if you want to know my rating i think i gave it like a seven or something i, I would have to double check but yeah uh that that's uh it everybody peace